Welcome to the Infinite Life Podcast. I'm your host, Katish Haverfield. This podcast is a journey of discovery as we learn how the soul evolves over various incarnations to understand all about the complexities of being a human being who has to bravely navigate viewing life as a non-dualistic struggle between good and evil through consciousness raising experiences that test our valour. Greetings, lovely podcast listeners and YouTube viewers. I am delighted to be here with you today. You can probably tell from the American accent, I am not Katish. I'm Jennifer Moore from EmpathicMastery.com, and this is my warm welcome to the Infinite Life Podcast with Katish Haberfield. I am, as many affectionately call me, a fairy godmother for empaths, an award-winning author, a master trainer for EFT International, and the host of the Empathic Mastery Show podcast, which will be featuring a potent conversation with Katish in the later spring of 2024. I'm honored to share my experience participating in Katish's Healer's Path sessions. As I imagine, like many of you, I've spent a good amount of time exploring the realms of meditation, healing, and intuitive development. However, what unfolded during my sessions with Katish was an experience far beyond my expectations. In this first session, Katish and I go on a powerful journey that covered a lot of remarkable territory. Not only did we explore childhood memories and how they've influenced my path as a healer, we also uncovered significant past lives which helped me to discover root causes of current emotional, mental, and business challenges, emphasizing the interconnectedness of past and present. In addition to this, we covered my own personal journey with healing and also my awakening as a healer, acknowledging and addressing deep-rooted fears and anxieties that we were able to trace back to specific events. And then we devoted some time to profound spiritual and energetic healing. By the end of our first session, I was feeling lighter, inspired, and deeply relaxed. My sincere hope is that you find insight, empowerment, and greater understanding of the complex and powerful path we embark on as healers. Obviously, I don't want to tell you too much because sessions like this are definitely better experienced than explained. So get ready for a powerful journey of self-discovery and healing. Each session, they build on the last, becoming more intense and revealing. This was a total delight for me, and I'm excited for you to join in on this adventure. I just really want to thank you for taking the time to listen to our episode. I'm Jennifer Moore, your willing subject for this exploration of empathy and healing. And please stay tuned for session two. It only gets more fascinating from here. Until then, I hope that you can embrace the journey and the transformative power that this work holds. Peace. Okay, so I just wanted to start off with the intention for this session. So our intention is to recall and explore key moments that have left emotional, mental, and karmic residues affecting your healer's path in your present life. So our intention is then to relate these to events of this life and to our past lives, our other incarnations. And I want you to follow the numbers down as I count backwards from five to zero, beginning with five, feeling the weight of your head, and with your eyes closed, turning them upwards as if looking towards your forehead, that's the way, and letting a warm, heavy, pleasant energy flow down, aware of the air on your skin, and three, the feeling within, down deeper into the heart, beating, sending warm, loving energy through your body, aware of your pulse, flowing down to your legs, down to the soles of your feet, heavier and heavier. 
letting that heavy, sleepy, daydreamy feeling take over. And I wonder if it reminds you of one time watching a late night movie, trying to stay awake, but feeling half asleep. With your eyelids so heavy, trying not to close, yet closing, and feeling that relief as you inevitably allowed yourself to relax completely. You could still hear the movie, and you could tune into your own inner movie. And how good that felt to finally hear your inner voice say, it's okay to relax. Slowing down deeper with every breath, heartbeat and number, now with zero. And I want you to imagine, visualize or feel a staircase with 10 steps that can take you down to a door, to a safe, comfortable white room where you can access all memories from this and all lifetimes. Notice the color and texture of your staircase. So start going down the staircase. Imagine or feel your feet stepping down now, going down deeper, down with each step, deeper down with every breath, with 10, 9, 8, 7, slow down, deepen, 6, your subconscious doesn't mind, 5, 4, getting to the bottom, 3, ready to step in, 2, your white room with one, now be there. So at the bottom of the stairs, reach out to open the door and find a white room with a comfortable chair. Make it decorated however you would like that room to be decorated and settle back into the comfortable chair. Imagine in front of you there is a cinema screen with a relaxing scene like a beach, a lake, a garden or a favourite place in nature. Just focus on the instructions and let your inner experience flow so you are acting as a witness, simply watching your stream of consciousness, whatever you think is the right thing. And in a moment, you can recall or imagine a time in your past when you felt good in or around water. It's a positive moment with a pleasant memory that could be any moment from months, years, or decades ago. It could be a swim in an ocean, a river, or a lake, or a childhood holiday. It could even just be a shower or bath a few days ago. Let one specific moment, a moment that is positive of being around or in water come up now. Choose one memory, just let that one be the right one, and bring it into focus. And I wonder, is that moment a place outdoors in nature or indoors in a home? <clears throat> it's in the bathtub. Okay. And are you having a warm bath or a cool bath today in that moment? Warm. Warm, beautiful. I want you to really step into the scene and feel the water. I want you to look around the bathroom. I want you to hear what you heard. And I want you, most importantly, to focus on the feeling of the water on your skin. Notice the feeling within. Do you feel like freedom, like being engulfed and floating in the ocean? Or is it a cleansing feeling? It feels more warm and engulfing, comforting. Engulfing, comforting? Okay, great. Okay, and are you seeing this like a movie or a photograph? I'm just in it. Okay, all right. So notice how you can get go deeper and deeper into the scene and become more and more immersed. And I just want you to let the sensation of the water soak and saturate through you. Blue or translucent, warm or refreshing, cleansing and healing. Continue to find ways you can recall and relive this more vividly in ways best for you. And as you continue to do this, we can observe what may be implied in this moment at a deeper level because we think of ourselves as solid, yet the human body is really 60% water. We think of this as planet Earth, yet the surface is really 70% ocean. We think of ourselves as our conscious mind, yet our subconscious mind is really the majority. So now you can tune into the reality of your subconscious mind. You can experience mental relaxation at a subconscious level and you can access long-term memory stored in your subconscious mind. And in a moment, you can recall or imagine 
a moment early in your childhood with one of your first friends. You may not have thought about this person for some time, but now you can recall a first or early happy childhood friend. So let one specific moment with one friend come up now. Just choose one friend and let that friend be the right one. Bring them into focus and step into the moment. Is this friend a boy or a girl? A girl? And about how old are you in this childhood moment? In second grade. Second grade? Right? Okay. Now, I want you to just look around and see what you saw and listen to what you heard. But most importantly, I want you to notice the feeling within. I want you to focus in on the face of your friend. And I want you to notice her smile. I want you to hear again her voice and her laughter and feel the sense of connection and friendship between you. I want you to let this childhood energy, joy and playful friendliness soak and saturate through you now. Your subconscious mind can remind you of old friends and positive inner resources. Now you're connecting with your own subconscious and your subconscious mind can be a good friend to you. You can set an intention now and repeat inside your mind, I ask my subconscious mind to help me access events from this life that can help me as a healer. I ask my subconscious mind to help me access moments that can help me as a healer. You have the positive inner resources that you need to be a healer and your subconscious mind can give you examples of these abilities from times in your past. So search through your personal history for a time in the past for a specific moment in this life of reconnecting with healing abilities, an early or first time of awakening as a healer or recognizing a talent as a healer. This may be like a spiritual experience that would lead you to a healing. It could be a moment of inner knowing or inner healing with yourself or a moment of helping, healing or being inspired to heal others or motivation, or confidence. This is a resourceful state you can reconnect with. I will count from three down to zero, and at zero you'll be able to recall or imagine any moment of awakening to or recognizing a talent or calling as a healer. Drifting back from three to a moment of awakening or recognizing healing abilities, back to a moment with two, focusing, hearing, feeling with one, ready to step into the scene and feel the feeling with zero now be there. First impression in that moment, are you inside or outside? I'm in a gazebo. So I'm, it's a screened gazebo. So I'm outside, but I'm in a shelter. Okay, great. And morning, afternoon, or evening? Dusk. Eve, Dusk? Just, yeah. yeah, twilight. Okay, so look around. What is happening there? What's, what are you doing? I am at a gathering, and mm -hmm. there is a woman who has been struggling with a migraine. And I just go over and lay hands on or just remove the energy of the mm -hmm. headache from her. And she is amazed. Like, she's, what are you doing to me? Because I was just taking, I was just removing the pain. I was just pulling it out of her. Okay, great. Yeah. And I want you to focus in on her expression on her face and her eyes. I don't think I could see her eyes because I was standing behind her. Like I was standing okay. to her side and behind her. So I had my hands like on her head and her shoulders. Okay, so what I want you to focus in now is your knowing, your inner knowing. Mm -hmm. And in this moment, she's now going to let you feel the emotion that she, that she felt as you were able to remove that pain from her. So you may not have realized this before, but she was letting you know at the time. So what are you sensing? It's this sense of wonder, relief, and also kind of incredulity, like that she just couldn't quite believe it was happening. Like it, mm -hmm. it went against her reality. Okay. 
And now I want you to tune into how you are feeling as you were doing this, as you were performing this service for her. I was excited, delighted, and just, oh, this worked. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because and I had, sorry, keep going. I had already been training as a healer. I had already been, I already had a Reiki. I was a Reiki practitioner, I, I believe at that point. And so I had already studied some, but this was the moment when it was like undeniable mm -hmm. that something could be shifted and changed. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now what I want you to do is I want to take it back one step further to a moment in time before you were trained as a Reiki healer. Mm -hmm. So the first spark that your memory can remember in this lifetime where you even had any inkling whatsoever that you had might have some kind of an ability. It's a positive resource. So there's two memories that are coming up. One is not ex ex is not directly related to this, but it, it's this memory that's been surfacing for the last three hours. And it was more about hesitance to step into my power. And then the other memory that's more about accessing the healer within is actually, as a child, playing at making potions. And mm -hmm. I had this, I was probably six, five, six, seven years old, early elementary school, late, you know, kindergarten, early elementary school. And I was, I would gather flowers and dirt and water and make these potions. Mm -hmm. and stir them up and mm -hmm. yeah and I knew I was making like and then I would offer like cups of this muddy broth to <laughs> yeah. yeah okay beautiful yeah oh uh I want you to go back into the memory where you were hesitant to step into your power yes so let me know what's happening in that memory I was, it was the day that we were as brownies, we were going to have yep. the initiation to fly mm -hmm. up into being Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was probably about an hour and a half or two hours before school would be done. And we were going to all go for this initiation and ceremony. And I suddenly started to feel really anxious and I started to feel really sick because okay. I was terrified about flying up i was terrified that i wouldn't be able to do it that i wouldn't be able to handle the responsibility somehow the idea of becoming a girl scout was just huge to me and so i told my teacher that i i didn't feel good and my teacher sent me to the nurse's office which was at the principal's office and so i have this i can remember walking down the hall and going to the front office and going to the front desk and saying, I don't feel good, and then sending me to the nurse. Okay. All right. So I want you to go back in time to the moment where you were at the, in the nurse's office. Yeah. Okay. And are you lying down or sitting up or standing? I think I'm sitting up. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I want you to really tap into the feelings that you have in this moment. A I want lot you to of anxiousness. And I want you to bring in your inner wise self and I want you to understand a new insight that you didn't understand at the time that can really tap into the root cause of this anxiety. What is this anxiety about? I'm listening. I keep hearing, I just, I really wasn't ready. Okay. And why weren't you ready? Because I... My, I was young. And my nervous system was just, it just hadn't settled. Okay. And 
And I didn't like the, and I didn't like a lot of the girls that were in Mm. the troop that I was going to be part of. Mm. That there it is. (laughs) There it is. Yep. Yeah. I didn't want to be part of that Girl Scout troop. There were just too many girls that were mean. There were just too many mean girls. There you go. There's the source. So you, you're. That was my, so I set a boundary. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. And in this moment, did you self soothe or self heal yourself or. Um, did you just surrender to the nurse and the nurse gave you something? What happened? Now, the nurse was the gateway to get my mother to come get me so I didn't have to go to okay. fly up. Okay. So I just had to like, I just had to pass the test. And mm-hmm. and there was a part of me that was afraid she was going to tell me I was faking it because I didn't want to mm-hmm. go fly up. But I was able to, basically, I was able to convince her to get my mom to come get me. And so... She wasn't really the end result. She was just the gateway. My mom okay. picking me up and bringing me home, that was what I needed. And okay. that's what I wanted. Yeah. All right. So I just want to focus on your body in that moment. So see yourself in that moment as the child. And where in your body are you storing this anxiety? And all in my upper, it's in my upper chest and in my, from actually like from shoulders to hip bones. Or from okay. shoulders to root. It's like from throat chakra to root chakra. Just okay. like full of it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So what I want you to do is I want you to imagine that you can float up high above your body and see your body just lying down on a comfortable couch. As still as okay. the child. Yep. And I want you to scan over your body like you've got a torch or like a one of those devices somebody takes at the beach to find hidden treasure. Mm-hmm. And you'll see light up either a color a symbol or a word or you'll hear something. So scan over your body, particularly in the areas where you're feeling the anxiety, and I want you to focus in and find one spot that wants to take have your attention right now. Okay, I'm scanning. Oh, there's this black hole this i'm just checking the rest of the torso there's this right at the solar plexus there's this like swirling void Mm -hmm. okay let's just focus on that for the moment yeah now this swirling void can you shine your torch in it and see if there's anything in there an object an energy form a being a symbol a color I see, I can see these, it's like a sinkhole Uh in that I can see kind of these walls with these like uh, veins and root and kind of large gnarly roots like wrapping around the edges and there's this sort of reddish rusty color around the outer edges and it just, so it's like this earthy, just like this vertical tunnel that is just going down and ooh, at the very bottom there's an oh there's a cavern there's a cave Uh and on the very bottom of that i can see a metal disc like a brass disc Uh that is like reflecting the light back from the torch that i'm holding Okay, so I want you to examine this metal disc. What do you now know about this disc? Where does it come from? It comes from Egypt. Okay, and who placed it there? The the Lemurians. Okay, so I want you to go back in time to when this disc was first placed into you. So you're going to go back in time. All the way back in time now. Let me know when you have arrived in the moment in time in Egypt. And I want to know, are you masculine or feminine? Mm -hmm. Presenting as feminine, but neither. Okay. Cis probably biologically male, but but trans like female okay. like intersexed yep yep okay and how do you 
is there in our current language a sound or a representation of a name that you went by? I'm hearing Aju. Okay. And Aju, how old are you in this moment? I think I'm about 19 years old. 19 years old? Okay. And in this moment, where are you? I am in the initiation chamber in one of the pyramids below the below the surface okay and how do you feel about being in the initiation chamber excited you're you're excited so you're there of free will yes okay great and what kind of initiation are you about to experience i am taking my First degree as a priest, priestess. Mm-hmm. And is this something that is in your family lineage or is this something you're doing of your own account? I think I'm doing it of my own account. Okay. So I'm especially excited because I think my family are like, they're like more like agricultural. Okay. And can you tell me what led you to this moment? Like how on earth did you know that you wanted to do this? What were what were the signs or what did you what led you to this moment? I had always known I was different. Mm-hmm. I would wear my mother's mantle. I would dress up in my mother's mantle and I would do I would lay hands on my brothers and sisters and the all of the animals like anybody I could mm-hmm. I would do healing work and the first time that we got to go to there was some ceremony and we got to go to the temple I was just completely enthralled I just fell in love mm-hmm. I was like this is home this is where I belong okay, and so I had been just I think I had an aunt I had extended family that was connected to the temples I just my immediate my nuclear family wasn't but like my I had an aunt so I had there were people who were connected to it that allowed me in okay and tell me in this initiation ceremony what does it have to do with the Lemurians The wisdom of Lemurians was the tradition that I was being Mm. initiated into. This was the vestiges of the Lemurian wisdom and knowledge. And Yeah. So how did a disc get on you, though? And what does the disc mean? The disc reflects light. Mm-hmm. Even in the darkest, even in the very, very darkest void, the disc is there to reflect the light back. Okay. So the disc is, and in the pyramids where they did those things where they would have like the mirrors set up in the different corners mm-hmm. so that the mirror would reflect light from like from the door, or the mirror would shine the light. It's similar to that in that this disc is at the bottom. It's a mirror. Okay. And it is reflecting light. All right. Could we call in today, with your permission, of course, uh, one of the Lemurian beings who uh, was part of putting this disc in? Yes. Okay. And can you be a translator or they can speak directly through you, whichever you prefer? I want to find out a little bit more and speak to them. So if they could introduce themselves, please, I'll say, hello, my name is Katish. And um, I'm coming to find out some more information about yourself and your connection with Jennifer today, please. Okay. The name you could use for me is Hathor. Hi, Hathor. Thank you so much for coming. I'm bringing your attention to this disc that you used, my dear. I understand its purpose is to reflect light, so it's always there no matter what. So this was a positive thing that you believed? for Jennifer to use yes yes okay and 
What I would like to bring your attention to today is that it's causing issues in her current lifetime. Did you realize that? I have... Trying to find the words. It's all right. Yeah, you're fine. Take your time. To me, to us, this has served as the antidote to the void. Mm -hmm. This disc that is in the bottom was placed there to serve as a reflection that no matter how deeply into the darkness she goes, the light is still reflected. I understand the intention. The intention was pure. Yeah. However, since this moment in her childhood, it's created like a spiraling void within her and that is causing anxiety and I think also potentially attracting negative beings. So one of the things that I would like to do is to request your permission to remove this purely to relieve her nervous system and to remind you that you can communicate telepathically with her and through light language with her. And also that she always has the light within, doesn't she? Her highest self is always within. Source is always within, and that is the light. The spine in the human being is the source of light, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm wondering if I could ask your permission, please, to gently, carefully remove this device and any traces so that it was as if it never was we there. Are, yes. Perfect. We are simply rewriting the timeline and it is not being installed. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay. Okay. And Hassel, before you go, could you please let me know if you have some kind of an activation or transmission that you would like to do now to reestablish the connection without the device? We are. Right, thank you. We are embodying her, them. We are transmitting the codes into perfect. every cell in their being. Perfect. Perfect. That's what we like to hear. About 85, 90% complete. Okay. Ninety-seven percent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And Hathor, could you please tell me what is it that you would really like Jennifer to understand about her healing abilities and the things that you have just coded in what does she need to step up to do now what has she been brought here for that she's not doing yet she dims her light mm -hmm. it is about allowing the volume 
to be dialed up. Mm -hmm. And instead of hiding when it is downtime, mm -hmm. it is simply on, off, yes, no. Mm -hmm. On duty, off duty. Mm -hmm. Her boundaries just, she is entitled to the firmer boundaries of when she is on. Mm -hmm. So, what she has been doing is she has been on or she has been hiding. Mm -hmm. Okay. And It is because she is not, she needs to redefine her boundaries more tightly. Okay, perfect. And Hassel, may I ask you one last question? Do you have a connection to her other than Egypt? Was she originally incarnated in a different location with you or is this, yes? Yes, okay. beyond this planet. Okay, is it beneficial to take her there now so that she can understand this connection? She understands it. Okay, so she doesn't need to go there now? No. No? Okay. All right, perfect. I'd like to thank you very much for your time today. And we appreciate your presence and your healing. Thank you so much. You are so well. Okay, so Jennifer, just then Reese coming back to your body and seeing yourself again. Floating over that spot now where there was that long spirally area. Is that now mm -hmm. gone, the swirling it's, board? Yeah, it is now. It is this orb of sun. So where it had been a void, it is a tunnel descending into the darkest void. Now it is this, it is literally the solar plexus. Uh, perfect. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. And I'm wondering if you could do continue to scan to see if there was anywhere else in her body at that time where this anxiety and nervous system imbalance was coming through. Okay. There's a lot of different places. Okay. So what's the most urgent one? I am. Um, I say uh, the throat is calcified. Okay. The heart okay. is the most pressing. Okay. And what's going on in the heart? There is this pressure. Okay. What is the pressure caused by? The immediate answer is fear. Fear, okay. And what is the root cause of the fear? Humans don't make sense. Okay. Where does this come from? Arriving as a star seed on this planet and witnessing behavior that is chaotic and disorderly. Okay. If I can bring in your inner wise self to take you to that moment where you witness this behavior that is chaotic and disorderly, and I want them to reframe that moment for you and give you the wisdom so that you understand why you are seeing this contrast between the behavior where you came from and the behavior here so that you understand this as part of whatever your purpose is and what your core skills are rather than turning it into a fear.
I'm waiting. Oh, yeah, fine. No rush. The beings that I come, the place I come from, the beings that we are, we have conscious choice and immediacy. It is thought, it is. And these beings on this, these primates, their nervous systems are establishing themselves but they are reacting instead of responding okay and we were arrived here to seed the consciousness of choice mm -hmm. And so we were shown this behavior to understand the difference between conscious response and unconscious reaction. Mm -hmm. And to learn how to stay in the light and the flow mm -hmm. when the illusion of fear is so visceral. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because fear is the dominating illusion on earth, isn't it? It is. It is absolutely the dominating. And it is so easy, even with the knowledge and the necessity to understand how contagious it is. Mm -hmm. It's like a virus, isn't it, really? It is. Mm -hmm. It is a contagion. Mm -hmm. All right, so is there something that you can do with your higher self or can we bring in somebody to help you switch that so that you don't bring that into your heart or to do some kind of a healing now so that even though it happens, you can now remove that? Yes. There are angels who are helping. Beautiful. What I had been holding on to the light inside of my heart, but I had this pressure like this contraction around my heart. Mm -hmm. So protecting my heart by trying mm -hmm. to block the fear from coming in mm -hmm. instead of allowing the light of my heart to vaporize the fear. I created yes. a barrier to protect myself from fear instead of letting my heart be the antidote to fear. Perfect. Okay, yes. No. Um. The illusion of protection, the illusion of girding it, the illusion of needing to put up walls. This is the timelines are getting re are shifting, the codes are shifting. My heart, her heart is dissolving, the walls are becoming light. Perfect. Mm. 
Okay, is that done? All right, so let's now examine the calcification in your throat. Very desiccated. It's very dried out. Why would a small child have this? This goes back. goes so back to the, the lives of in the desert. In the desert? As the ascetics, as an ascetic in the desert, oh. as among the desert fathers. Okay. Oh. This belief that was very much a human belief that was instilled that the way to deep connection and awareness of God. Uh -huh. Is through deprivation. Yep. Is through starvation. Mm -hmm. Is through depletion. The littlest bit of sleep possible. Mm -hmm. The littlest bit of food possible. Mm -hmm. Baking in the sun for hours a day. Mm -hmm. Gazing with my eyes closed into the sun and just getting dried out. And what do you know now about the way to deep connection? The way to deep connection is effortless. Mm -hmm. The way to deep connection is the opposite of strength. Mm -hmm. This is what the Buddha also showed, hey. Yeah. The way to deep connection is never through self-harm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What can we do today to remoisten the throat? Going back in time in that life. Okay, great. There was a pivotal moment. Okay. Around the age of 13 or 14, I was female. Okay. And I could choose to either follow. I'm not even sure how I ended up with this choice other than I apparently had an older brother was it was I followed my brother into the desert mm -hmm. but I could have chosen to remain I think I was in Palestine mm -hmm. I could have chosen to remain in the Fertile Crescent mm -hmm. and living a life of olives and honey and wine and delight and pleasure and children. Okay, so before you make any choice, I just want you to know that you can rewrite this if you wish to, but there mm -hmm. are learnings that your soul has gained by choosing to go into the desert, yeah? Yes. So what I want you to think is carefully about this moment in time, and I want you to receive the inner wise knowledge about how you can still experience the desert lifetime but not the calcification or how you can heal the calcification now because we don't want to remove the wisdom that was gained from the experience. 
There is an oasis. Uh -huh. There is a spring. Uh -huh. Grotto. And this is part of the desert. Uh -huh. I can I give myself permission mm -hmm. to be in this oasis mm -hmm. to settle into the vortex of this And to be replenished. Okay, great. I'm seeing another image of another life that mm -hmm. is connected to now what's in my throat feels more like gelatinous mm -hmm. or gel, like gel, but still mm -hmm. firm. Mm -hmm. So it's dried out still, but it's not as dried out. Okay. And I can see this life in a stone wall city that was like a castle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but before it would have been called Bavaria mm -hmm. again female mm -hmm. and in a time where the gender politics had started and I was an oracle, but I was not allowed. It, I was, I had, I believed that I had to restrain any truth from coming through me. Mm. It was not considered appropriate as a member of the court to no. speak as a female, mm -hmm. anything truthful. Mm -hmm. If I had been cloistered, if I had gone to, if I had been an anchorite, like somebody like Julian of Norwich, I could have spoken nobody mm -hmm. would have heard me for a couple hundred more years probably but but because i was i did not have the protection of the cloister i did not mm -hmm. have the protection of a convent mm -hmm. i was instead just unable to share anything okay so can you take a look around you in this moment <laughs> is there somebody there that needs crossing over in that room in the mid in that time or no in that lifetime yeah in that lifetime okay okay i can see i'm just gonna look around i'm looking out a big arched window and i can see like the meadows the pastures mm -hmm. with the sheep in the pastures mm -hmm. Um, uh, oh, okay. As I turn and I look over towards the left of the room, and it's like a round, turdy kind of room, mm -hmm. there is a woman who is quite old. She looks a lot like the um, Jean Marsh's character in the original Willow. Like okay. she's that evil stepmother kind of thing. But this is uh -huh. a woman who 
she's just really, she didn't get her way. She's very angry. Okay. And so and... I think she's just stuck around because she's pissed. Okay. All right. So what I want you to do is invite her to, not to attach to you, but invite her to converse with us so we can understand her anger. Mm -hmm. So what happened to her that made her angry? Her um, husband was either the king or was an aristocrat, was high up in, in, mm -hmm. in the politics. And she had a couple daughters, but because she did not have any sons, uh -huh. he dispatched of her. Okay. So she was mur murdered. She was, yeah, she was, she became sick. She became sick. Okay. All right. And why did she not go to the light at the time of death? She was pissed. Her she daughters lost pissed. their inheritance. Mm -hmm. And this, and her handmaid become, like, he, I don't know if it was her, one of the, ser he basically hooked up with one of the servants okay. because she was younger and she was pregnant with a child, a son. Okay. And so she was just like, this will not do my daughters, because the daughters went from positions of incredible status mm -hmm. to suddenly becoming servants themselves. I understand. Okay. All right. And um, so what we, uh, does she have a, a sort of a first name that we can refer to her? So I don't like to be impersonal. I'm hearing a name that doesn't make sense in the terms of the location. Oh. And so it may be, this is Jennifer speaking. Uh -huh. It may be simply that I'm not able to access the translation or the sound of her true name, but it's something along the lines of Jessery. Jessery? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So Jessery, my name is Katish. Sweetheart, I just want to let you know, firstly, we're very sorry for what you have experienced. We understand your pain and your anger. But, but I, I like, it sucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, what I wanted to let you know, though, sweetheart, is that because you haven't gone to the light and crossed over, there's a number of things that have happened, which you may not have been aware of. Firstly, is that your daughters can't finish their grieving for you. What I mean by that is that all incarnations, even their other lifetimes after this life, when you were alive with them, they can't heal. They carry this stain of grief in their hearts, okay, when you don't cross over. The second thing is that your soul can't heal. It's waiting for you to return to the light so that you can understand, receive healing and gain insight into this lifetime. Why, what happened to you? And the third thing is that whilst you're in this state, which is bodiless, you can attract negative energy towards you, which then imprints upon your soul through all time as well. What we need to do is to look around you and see if you see any lower astral beings or negative energy that's surrounding you, darling, so that we can call in the rescue spirits of light and the spiritual police to cross that energy over. Mm -hmm. I can see these tendrils of spores of jealousy, fear, negativity, mm -hmm. and then these sort of opportunistic entities mm -hmm. that draw out and desiccate, suck the life force out of me. In turn, this woman that Jennifer was, was one of my daughters. Jennifer was one of your daughters. Okay. Here yeah. we have the connection. Yeah. Yeah. And I was feeding on her because okay. she was the only one who was sensitive enough. She was the one who could sense my presence. She was the one who also understood the unfairness of what had happened. Okay. All right. So we're going to call in the spiritual police and the rescue spirits of light, as well as Archangel Michael, Archangel Zadkiel, 
to come and remove the opportunities opportunistic entities from both Jennifer and um, her mother right now? What are you sensing? What did you laugh about? Uh, she just said basically 100 years is long enough to be pissed. Yeah, 100 years, okay. Mm. All right, my darling, does that mean you're ready to go to the light now? Yes. Okay, so they will give you a healing blanket of golden light to heal your emotions as well, to heal the jealousy, to heal the rage. And it's we like wish it you... It's unfair, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Hmm. So we wish you God speak, God bless, and could you please let us know, Jennifer, when she's gone to the light? Just watching for every last bit. Are you all right? Okay. Okay. All right. So now you've had that experience, I want you to know that um, from now on, you will be able to sense any earthbound spirits when you visit past lives. Okay. So they will make themselves um, present to you so that you can cross them over and call in for the rescue spirits of light, spiritual police, Archangel Michael, Azrael, Ariel, whoever you wish to call in. Um, it's really important that we do that because it clears that energy across all incarnations. Okay. So now we can get to your story in that lifetime, now that we have crossed her over. I want you to let me know more about this gelatinous throat and your inability to be the oracle that you wanted to be. So we can get to the point in time that we need to see uh, that is causing the residue right now. So what I'm seeing or hearing is that when my mother was alive, I was the middle daughter. My role was to be, and I was beautiful, my role was simply to be entertainment, to be entertaining. I was taught the arts of dance and of music making, and I was meant to simply entertain so there was i could sing songs that had no, messages okay. encoded yep. but once my mother was murdered whew, i was no longer allowed to sing i became i went from sitting at the table to serving at the table mm -hmm. and so all of these songs that were my way of expressing myself became these kind of like grape-sized like peeled grapes in mm -hmm. my throat like nodes yeah yeah nodes in my throat okay what can we do now to release these nodes and to heal the throat Does Jennifer in her current lifetime like to sing? Yes. And I literally have a node in my throat. 
and move yeah. that void. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's heal this node in your throat, Jennifer. Give yourself complete permission to heal the nodes in your throat. And the you of the other time is allowed to hand over these secret codes so that you can sing these codes. Mm -hmm. can feel this this minty tingling sensation mm -hmm. in my throat it is shifting everything is dissolving everything is turning into liquid perfect My throat is becoming like a crystal flute. Perfect. There was still something. Let me know when that's complete. I think it is. Okay, so I have a question for you, Jennifer. The side of your body, above the shoulder, the side that has the monkey behind you, mm -hmm. there's an energetic presence there. Who is that? That is probably my father. Okay. So let's just check and ask. Oh. Right on the right on your shoulder on top of the on top of your jumper. Mm -hmm. I guess what I should ask is who are you? That's a good question. So I'm actually hearing I am it is not my father because he crossed over really easily, really beautifully. Mm -hmm. He's been back and forth, but he's really good. It's my uncle Lee, my my mother's uncle. So did he not cross over? Evidently. Okay. Uncle Lee, my dear. Thank you for making your presence felt so that we could be of assistance today. My name is Katish, and I'm just wondering, honey, why didn't you go to the light? I couldn't see it. You couldn't see it. Okay, that's all right. Some people just can't see it. They get a fright. Did you die earlier than you thought you would? No. No, you just couldn't see it at the time. I was drunk. You were drunk. Okay. All right, that would explain it. All right. And are you tired of hanging around? Yeah. Doesn't bother you either way? I'm, I'm waiting for Charlie. Who's Charlie? Jennifer's mother. You're waiting for her. Is she still alive? Is she? 
Yes. Okay. So can I give you a newsflash? Yeah. Are you op- open to listening to me? Do you know the most powerful thing that you can do for Charlie? Is you need to cross to the light and then you can come back and get Charlie in a more powerful state. So when you haven't crossed over, you don't have the abilities and you can't be helpful to Charlie like you can if you have crossed over. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Do you need to have anything else explained to you before you go or are you ready to go now? I just need to acknowledge the other reason I've stuck around is... Okay, please just... Yeah. My brother went overboard and it was my fault, I thought. Oh, I see. I'm sorry to hear that you feel guilty about that. Yeah, the guilt has kept me here. Guilt. Okay. Guilt, yeah. Okay. So what was your brother's name, darling? Percy. Percy. All right. I happen to know that Percy is waiting for you in the light. Is there anything else that you wish to convey to Jennifer before you go with Percy? I'm sorry to my mother, Elizabeth, that you were named after. Okay. Does that make sense to you, Jennifer? It makes total sense to me. Okay, great. He was, right. he, was an ab- he was a mean drunk and lived with his mother, who I am named after. Okay. So I think I was a reminder of his mother. Okay. Hmm. And has he been attached to you or just hanging around? I don't think he's been attached. I don't think he's been attached to me. Ask him. He says he has been. Okay. All right. I've been then... watching over all three of us. I have a sister and a brother. And so he has been watching over my mother. My sister, my brother, and I, since he died. Okay. And I was and 18 how... when he died. Okay. How has he been influencing your energy since then? Your energy and your thoughts and your actions? He has, in... he has reinforced the sense of inhibition, limitation, guilt, Danger and pessimism. Okay. So, Jennifer, are you ready to forgive him for what he has done to you? Absolutely. Okay, perfect. All right. Darling, are you ready now to go to the light? Knowing that all is forgiven? Okay. All right, so Percy's going to come with an angel and the light, and all you and need Elizabeth to do. Elizabeth too. And Elizabeth too. Mm-hmm. She's coming too. Oh, Elizabeth hadn't crossed over either. No, Elizabeth has crossed over. Elizabeth oh, Elizabeth's coming, coming with Percy as well. Okay, yeah. perfect. All right, so I'll just let you watch that scene, Jennifer. We wish you God speed. We God bless. Okay. Okay, beautiful. All right, Jennifer. So we're just now going to call upon the healing spirits of light to heal the spaces left by where Uncle Lee attached. So we ask the healing spirits of light to heal any after effects of the attachment, including healing any residues of thought or feeling. So I just want you to assist the healing spirits of light by doing a body scan and visualizing the healing spirits sending light to the areas of the body that need it most. So imagine, visualize, or feel a white or golden light with a loving, wise energy flowing down from the top of your head 
down to your face and your jaw, over your neck and your throat, down to your shoulders, your back and your core, filling you with healing, peaceful energy. Let it flow down your spine through your chest, spreading deeper with every heartbeat and breath, all the way down to the legs of your feet. Call upon the healing spirits of light to do this sealing light exercise. Fill those cleansed spaces with golden white light surrounding your whole body in a healing cocoon of light. Well, okay, let this healing cocoon of light grow from a central point within you so that it surrounds and fills every cell of your body. Let this aura of light remain strong for the coming minutes and days as Jennifer recovers and prepares fully to integrate this experience. And Jennifer, as you feel and hear the healing light in your body, you can also focus on healing the attentions and emotions of everything you experience today in this session, for all lifetimes, including your small former child self. Recall how your wiser self can see things with calm, clarity and wisdom and feel the energies of acceptance, forgiveness and loving kindness. Jennifer, you've done great. For the next few days, reduce your schedule of work and exercise and increase your sleep and relaxation. Each morning and night, practice the exercises of scanning your body, cleaning and healing with light and filling and sealing with light. The old way is over. Any old attachments cannot control or affect you in any way anymore. Any side effects or residues of spirit attachment like unfelt habits, thoughts, ideas or memory cannot control or affect you in any way anymore. Now, when you look back on spirit attachment, you can see it from a higher non-dualistic perspective. Perhaps there's no good or bad experiences, just experiences that help us learn and grow. Any hard experiences give us the opportunity to rise above challenges so they can be a blessing in disguise. You now have the courage to set appropriate boundaries and not be influenced. You have the confidence and clarity to set your intention to follow your own inner light. You have now shown at a high level that you can rise above the frequencies of fear, anger and deception to choose wisdom, forgiveness and compassion. You have decided to rise above any heavy energies and choose peace. You can now imagine all the ways this powerful freedom you have attained in this session can benefit you in the future. You can feel great about all you've learnt and done. Congratulations. We thank your higher self and spirit guides for the help. And now I'm going to count you up at five, and at five you'll be able to come back into the moment feeling good. Coming up with one, two, three, four, five. Eyes open, feeling good. Okay. How are you feeling? light 